Hello, my wonderful friends. This is Frank Ilo from Afri Design Studios. In our last lesson, we talked about how to effect the cutting wall or the storefront on your building. But we stopped at the ground floor level. Whereas in this our very project, the cutting wall runs from the ground floor to the first floor. In today's lesson, we'll be concluding the other parts of this very lesson, which is taking our cutting wall all the way to our first floor level, just as we have it in our specimen drawing. So having said that, we are going to continue. But let me refresh our memory on what we did in our previous class or in our previous lesson. In our previous lesson, we were able to we are able to add this cutting wall you are seeing here. This cutting wall is running from the DPC or the ground floor level directly all the way to the first floor level. But in the real sense, it should have been offset from this place. It's not supposed to touch this very floor. It's not supposed to touch the ground floor. We are going to offset it by 450 millimeters away from the DPC so that it doesn't touch the floor. So, and I want to also remind you that in our last lesson, this the distance from here to here, that is the distance of this cutting wall on the south elevation. Here is the south elevation. It actu was actually 900 millimeters. That was what we did. And on this west elevation, which is this other side of it, we took away 1,800 millimeters. So just like we did it on the ground floor, we shall be repeating the same thing on the first floor. We are going to cut this wall on this southern elevation, and we are also going to cut it from the western elevation. That is the west elevation here. The same thing we did here, we are going to do here. And again, we will now come back and offset this cutting wall 450 millimeters away from the floor slab on the ground floor. So let's get it started. To continue from the first floor level, we are going to go through our project browser and um, bring out our first floor level, which is 04FFL. So I go to my project browser, I come under floor plans, 04FFL is where I am. So I have to double click on it. So this is our first floor elevation. The same thing we did on our previous lesson, we are going to repeat here. We go to our detail, go to annotate, from annotate to our detail line. Then from detail line, we now offset it again. We now draw a line from here, but before then we go to offset and type in 900, 900. And we're going to draw another wall, position our wall here and draw like this. Having done that, you press escape, do the same thing on the west elevation. On the west elevation, you click here and go like this. If you go like this, it is falling outside the building, you go to your right. So when you go to your right, you have it this way. Okay. Bring the lines to the middle of the wall. Like this. And this, like this. Okay, this one is actually wrong. This is supposed to be 1,800. What did I type? Detail line. 1,800. Was it not what was there? 1,800. 1,800. Yeah, this is the right thing. So 1,800. So I click on this and take it back a bit so that it will help me to split the wall. You could actually split this wall without drawing these lines, but these lines enables me to get it accurately at the point or at the dimension I want it. So the next thing I have to do is to go to modify. Then I go to split elements. I come to the tip of this line. When I see that green dot appearing, when I see that big dot appearing, it means I'm at the, on the right position. So I do the same thing on the south elevation as well. I can place it here. And click to split. Once I have splitted these walls, 
The next thing I have to do is to delete these lines. I don't need these lines for anything, just for me to get the accurate dimension or the accurate point. When I have succeeded in doing this, the next thing I have to do is to split these walls like this. Sorry, not split, delete them. I'm going to delete these walls. I click on this one to delete it. I click on this to delete it. After deleting this, the next thing I have to do is to go to my uh, ground floor level or my 3D view. Any of them can go, okay? But I normally choose my 3D view so that I can see what I'm doing. So I click on my default 3D view here so I can see it like this. So when I hover my, my mouse on the cutting wall on the south elevation, it's going to show me highlights, this blue highlights, showing that I have actually captured the cutting wall that I need. So I click on it. Once I have click, clicked on it, I have to do the same thing on the cutting wall on my west elevation. But this time around, I have to press down on my control key on my keyboard. If not, I cannot select the two of them at the same time. So I hold, I hold down my control, my control key on my keyboard, then I click on this one. So I have got the two cutting walls selected at the same time. Now, the next thing I have to do is to go to my properties palette. This is my properties palette. This is it. You can see it here. Sometimes it is positioned here. Sometimes it is on the left side. You can actually move it to where you want it. If I don't want it here, I can still move it to my left. So I'm explaining this because you may not see your own here. You may see your own on the left side of your screen. Do not get confused. Just read the name. If you are seeing properties there, that is what it is. So I go here. What am I actually here for? I am here to select where I want the cutting wall to stop. I want to select the height of this cutting wall. The height of this cutting wall is definitely going to be at the beam level of my first floor. It's not going all the way to my roof level or my overhead, over, um, overhead um, course. It's not getting there. It's going to stop at the beam in my first floor level. So this is where I have to select it. And it is called the top constraint. Whenever you see top constraint, it means where you want an element like wall or uh, glasses or anything to stop at, most especially your walls. So, if you look at this now, it, is, it has stopped at 04FFL, which is where it is currently. But I want it to move a little bit further to 05 beam 1. My beam 1 signifies my first floor beam, so I select it. When I select it, I click apply, and you will see it, it will move. Can you see where the cutting wall is now? It has moved to the beam level of my first floor plan. Having done this, you may not want your cutting wall to be like this. You may want it to be further divided, to divide it further. To divide this further, but I tell you, I love it the way it is. I'm, I mean, this cutting wall now, I love it the way it is. Some people may want to divide it, you know, with the mullion. What I mean by mullion is this iron here, this iron. Some people may like to divide it into smaller portions. How do you do that? How do you do that? To do that, you click on edit type. When you click on edit type, you click on duplicate if you wish to. Then we can call this storefront 2 and click OK. After clicking OK, what's the next thing you do? You come here, here you see vertical grid. You are going to change things on the vertical grid and the horizontal grid. First and foremost, let's change the one on vertical grid. Let's assume I want to further divide these cutting walls into, um, uh, into squares or boxes of 600 by 600. 600 by 600, okay? If I want to make it 600 by 600, what am I going to do? I come here, click on this 1524, and change this to 600, 600. Then I come down to the horizontal grid, click in here and type 600. After doing this, I come here and click OK. Now look at, watch the cutting wall now. How, can you see how they have been further divided into smaller boxes? I don't know if you can see this. So this is all we have now. This is all we have now. 
So in case you want yours to be like this, you can make it like this, but I don't usually like this one that are, that are divided into smaller portion. You know, I don't know why, but I think um, it depends on the, 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 the situation or the circumstances or the scenario. There are some places where you would like it like this, and there are some places you would like them to be bolder and uh, more spacious. So having done this, there's one thing that is left. If you look at this cutting wall, it is not touching the floor. It is not touching the overhead course. It is stopping at the beam here. So I don't also want the bottom to touch the floor here. I want it to be a little bit off. Let it be a little bit off the floor by 40, 450 millimeters. How do I do that? So I hover around. Make sure that the this blue dotted lines appears before you click. If it didn't appear and you click, you may not actually pick the cotton wall itself per se. So once the dotted line, the blue dotted lines are appearing, it means it has been highlighted. Then I click on it. When I click on that one on the south elevation, then I move to the one on the left, um, the west elevation, and hold down my control key before I click. Then two of them are now selected so that when I move it up, both of them will move up at the same time. So what am I going to do now? I come here again. Where you, if, where you under properties, where you see top constraints, the top constraints remains. The base constraint also remains. The base constraint means where it is starting from. That is the, the bottom of the wall. And the top constraint means the top of the wall. Then where you have to manipulate now is the, the offset. I have to leave the top offset at zero because I'm not touching that one. For the base offset, that is the one I want to touch. So I go, I'm going to click inside this zero and make it 450. This 450 is to push it up by 450. If I had typed minus 450, it means to push it down. So, but I'm going up. So I have to leave it at 450. Then I click apply. When I click apply, it will go up. As it has gone up, you will notice two things. Number one is that the bottom of the cutting wall now is open, meaning we are seeing the, the, the inside of the building through here. There is no wall here. We are also going to draw another wall here. Then again, at the top of the cutting wall, there is also a, 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 an open space. We are also going to block this. So let us start with this one first. Let's block here. How do we block it? We are going to go to 0, 05 beam 1 under our project browser and double click on it when you double click on this then you come here simply go to wall sorry go to architecture click on architecture then click on wall when you click on wall when you click on wall mind you we are still on cutting wall so you have to change the cutting wall click here and make sure you select basic wall generic 225 do not select uh, storefront then you click on it then you come here come to the middle of this wall click here and go here and go here but there's something i failed to tell you when you have selected this wall before you draw this wall make sure you have selected where this wall is going to stop but by default it is telling us that it's going to stop at the roof level, which is the only level that is left. As mean you had more levels that are still left, it is better for you to come and select. But this is the only level left, so that is why it, it just pegged it on 06 roof level. You can see this is the only one, okay, and probably the X, um, extra, but I want it to be here. So I sell, select 06 roof before I draw this wall, so that it doesn't go beyond the place I want it to stop or below where I want it to stop. Having done this, I now click, press escape on my keyboard two times. That is twice. Then if you look at the default 3D view, what you are going to see is that that place has, has been covered. It has been covered. And when you have covered this, the next thing you have to do is to also cover this one. To cover this one, we are going to go to 02 ground floor level. Double click on it. After double clicking on that, you will see it here. But now, there is a trick to this one. The trick to this one is that when you click on the wall, you are not going to select anything here. Rather, you select unconnected. Unconnected. Because the place you want to stop this wall, we did not create the 
level for it. For that, we are going to create an impromptu level, or do I say an uh, uh, emergency level? That is, whenever you want to create an emergency level that was not initially created when you were creating your levels, I call it. You 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 select the unconnected, and I myself I call it emergency level or impromptu level. So I click on unconnected, then come here and wipe this out. When I wipe this out, I'm going to type 450. 450. Then I come here at the middle of the wall here and click here and go here, click here, and also go this way and click. Then I press escape twice. When I press escape twice, I'm going to go to my default 3D view. I click on it. Now you can see this place has covered. It has covered and everything has or everything has already been covered. So this is how this goes about cutting wall. But by the way, I want to return to the initial cutting wall I had before, which is this normal storefront. Like I told you, I don't like these tiny, tiny squares. I like it bold and wide. So I go to storefront. This is the tiny ones. This is the main one. I click on this. So I love it like this. I love it like this. And here is where we'll be ending today's lesson. Thank you so much for watching. And I also urge you to move down to our YouTube channel. Go to, just go to YouTube and search Afri Design Studios. You will see us live and direct in YouTube. And um, I thank you as you do that. God bless you.